and tricks, and we're kind of excited to show them to you. Some of them, I think we have a lot of ITCs or ITRTs in this group, so some of these tips you may already know about. Adam is going to start us off um, first off, and I'm going to, in the chat, I'm putting a link to um, all of our, we, have, we made a Canvas course just for this, and I'm going to go ahead and post that in chat. And it also is listed on our VISTI page. So if you want to open that up, if you want to follow along, or you can just open it and bookmark it for later. Great. Thanks, Marcia. Uh, so basically, the objective of this course is to help you gain insight in some of the tricks and tips and tricks in Canvas that Marcia and myself have, have come across in training teachers, like she had said, and, and just working with, working with teachers and students. Uh, we're going to go through these things pretty fast because we have a very, very short amount of time. But don't worry. We have videos and tutorials going all over all the things that we've, we're gonna talk about today, tonight um, in, the, in the Canvas course that, that's in the, that Marsha's gonna put in the chat. She hasn't done so already. One of the things I do wanna point out is on the homepage in the Canvas course, um, we do have your, we want you to vote for your favorite tip. So you just click here and then, then it'll open up and you'll be able to vote for your favorite tip. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna go to the modules. That's where you go. That's where we have modules set up for all the different top secret tips. The first one we're going to talk about is, is embedding things into Canvas. Um, so I created a page down right here that I'm going to be using uh, to start to embed things in there so you guys can see how it looks. Uh, the first thing is we're going to talk about is math manipulatives. So there's a company out there called Didax. You've probably heard of them before. Um, they have a whole bunch of different uh, manipulatives that you can actually embed using using these iframe codes right here. Um, so I'm gonna grab one from some that I have set up. Um, I'm gonna go back into the modules. I'm gonna go back into that page that I had just discussed. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when embeds. So right now I'm gonna embed the, uh, the Unifix cubes into it. Um, if you notice in Canvas too, uh, me and Marshall were kind of talking the other day, this cloud kind of thing little popped up right here. Um, this is the new way to embed. So you can click it, it's you enter your embed code right there. You click submit and then your math manipulative pops up. Uh, if you click save, then from the student view, I'm not gonna go into student view, but they would have, they have the option to be able to go ahead and move this out. Um, so it's a really cool thing that, that Didax has. And I said, they have about 30 or 40 different, different ones that you can do. Um, the next one I wanna talk about is Desmos. All right, so I'm gonna go back into the edit and I'm just gonna build off of this page that I have started already. I'm not gonna go in and delete anything. Um, this is a way that you can embed right here. I like to go to the uh, HTML code, just personal preference of mine. Um, now that South Carolina has, has adapted the Desmos calculator, uh, elementary, it is the four function calculator. Um, I believe, I'm not in middle school, so I believe I'm saying this correctly. Middle school and high is the uh, scientific calculator. Um, but if you just paste it right in there, you jump out of the HTML code, and then you have your Desmos calculator that you can embed right into any page, any assignment, anywhere, anywhere where, there's, where there's the HTML editor or the embed um, button right here, you can, you can do that. Cool thing, about, cool thing about Desmos also is that Desmos actually has different um, as Desmos actually has different uh, assignments that they have set up for um, students. So you can actually go in, you set your class up, you can search for an activity. You can get this activity right here, and then you can embed that right into your, your Canvas page as well. So it's, it's a pretty cool feature that they have <clears throat> that they've created. Um, all right, so moving forward. Um, there's a spinner that we found that you can embed in here as well. Um, and it's just a cool different way to, to, you know, maybe engage some students. So I'm going to grab this code I have right here. I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to come off my HTML code and then down here I have a spinner embedded right here. Okay. Um, and it's just simple. You just click it, it spins. I do want to point out within the code itself, this is where you would change what is what is in the code, uh, which is what is on the spinner itself. So what we have inside the course is uh, we highlighted the places where you would just have to change the words in the code um, to change what it says on the spinners itself. Okay. 
another cool thing that, that we came across is something called, it's an iframe generator, okay? Um, so you can go to your I, an iframe generator, right? And you can put uh, a website in here, right? So if we live close to DC, right? So I'm gonna grab this DC website. I'm gonna throw it in my iframe generator. And then I'm gonna generate the code for that. And then I could take this code, I can go back into um, where I wanna put it. I can paste it in there. And then now I have just the website, right? So the kids aren't going anywhere else. They're just going right to the website. Uh, it doesn't wanna be friendly today. Um, they're going right to the website um, that, that you take that from. And it's just an iframe generator. So it's an inline frame used to use inside of a web page or any other page to load another HTML document inside of it. Okay. So that, that's just what it's doing. It's just pulling that and putting it into here. Um, so everything's kind of housed in one area. It's not opening up a new window or anything like that. Uh, the next thing I want to show you guys is emojis. Okay. So hey, how you Alan, can before you yeah. move on, can you just show them real quick where those codes are for somebody was asking about where sure. the the code is for the four function and Absolutely. and the spinner. They can just copy and paste it. Right. So write it within here. Okay. So let's just say for the spinner. Right. So we at, on all of our pages we have the codes right in there, and then you see how we highlighted it right here. So then this is what you would change to change the writing on the section within the spinner itself. Okay. Um, and any of our pages, that's that's how we set it up. Um, so that would be well, that's the iframe generator, but um, any of the pages that have code inside of that, uh, that is, a, is an embed, we, we did that. We, we set it up with the, um, with the code to be able to do it. So this, like this one's right here. Okay. Um, so it's easy to get to, it's easy to find, it's easy to manipulate, it's easy to change to whatever, however you want to use it. All right. So emojis can be extremely powerful things. The great thing about emojis too, is that they're accessible, right? If you have a screen reader that has to go over this, the screen reader will, will read the emoji. Okay. So emojis are totally fine for accessibility. There's a couple different cool ways that you can use emojis. So I just want to show you some examples here. So this teacher decided to set her, to set her um, module up this way. You know, it's the day where they start, how, what they do kind of walks the student through. Here's a video, here's a stop, here's the beginning of the next day. Um, another, another teacher has set it up with this way. So here's her warm ups, assignments, notes, tests, and, tests and quizzes. Uh, there's teachers that have set up grading with emojis, uh, probably pretty good for the littles, right? Um, so this is how they have that set up and they can, they can easily put that in there. Uh, so there's a couple different ways that you can set emojis up. So if I wanted to set emoji up, if I wanted to take this right here and I want to add emoji to it, um, I would just click the edit. And then I can just right click if I'm on a uh, Windows PC. There is a way to do it on a Mac. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's very, very similar. So you can just click an emoji. Boom, that's on there. Easy, easy peasy. You can also go to a website called Emojipedia. Okay. Um, and that is also in the, in the course. Uh, you can just simply just copy the one that you want. You go back into it, and then you can you uh, you paste it. Okay, boom, that's it right there. Okay, update your module. There it is, all good to go. Uh, so be creative when you can do this. You know, especially for our littles that 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 might need the same consistency moving through the different modules because everything is is the same. They know exactly what the expectations are of them and what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, another cool feature is within Studio. So within Studio, you can actually create a quiz within Studio. It's very, very similar to Edpuzzle, if you've ever used Edpuzzle before. Um, uh, so what you can do is you can, let me grab this one. Oops, I'm sorry, went to the wrong spot. If you're, if you're on a video that you created, you can click the three dots and you can go to Create Quiz. Okay, you enter the name of the quiz. And then right here, wherever you want it to stop. Oh, you were here last year. Okay, you just click this button and then you have three different answer choices that you can choose from. Wish there was more, hopefully they're developing that, but as of right now, there's only three. Uh, so if you wanna choose multiple choice, the answer, yeah, it comes up to where you put the answer stem in there. You put your answer choices, you can add different answer options right here. 
you can vary points by answer, you can shuffle choices, um, you can leave different types of feedback for the correct answer, for the incorrect answer, or general feedback. Basically, it, it follows the, along the lines of how you set up a multiple choice question for the classic quizzes. Um, the last thing that I want to show you guys right now is if you accidentally uh, delete something, right? Okay. So let's just say that you're, you're going through and all of a sudden you delete something. Ah, where'd my course go? There's a way for you to be able to get it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my modules. I'm actually going to delete a module. Okay. So I have a module down at the bottom. Guess what it's named? Delete. Uh, so it's, it's actually pretty hard to delete something in Canvas. So if you go to delete, there's somebody something pops up and say, you sure, sure you really want to do this? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I really want to do that, okay? So then what I need to do is I need to go up to the URL. I need to have right here, and then I'm gonna put undelete. I go to undelete, and then boom, here it is right here. So then I can restore it right back to where it was. I click restore. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I want to do it. Click okay. And then I can go back into my modules and, and guess what's gonna be there? It's gonna be right there where it was, okay? Um, so again, it's very hard to actually physically, I mean, to delete something completely within Canvas. Um, it's not impossible, but it is, it is pretty difficult for you not to be able to get it back. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. That time goes by fast, Marsha. Well, you can take that. over. Here. You, you do good. So one thing about that undelete, it only holds, I believe it is up to 25 items. So yeah. if somebody deleted 100 items, well, you're, you're okay for 25 of those. But after that, you're not. <laughs> okay. So um, are there any questions before I get I, any, any burning questions here? Um, Oh, somebody said, do you have to use the undelete immediately after you delete it? No, you do not. So you do have the opportunity to, um, again, undelete the past 25 items that you've deleted, no matter how long it is. Well, I don't know if that's no matter how long, but within reason, I have found. Okay, so what I am going to be doing is I am going to be talking about adjusting due dates for our students. So what, this happens all of the time. I have teachers say, you know, you, you have a student who maybe has had technical difficulties um, or they, uh, you know, they were sick or something and they, the teachers don't want to open up an assignment for the whole class. And so they just tell the kid, oh, I guess you can't do that. So um, one of the things you can do is you can change an assignment just for um, a particular student or group of students. So I'm going to go ahead and go into assignments here. Actually, I have a course. This is not for student students. I have this is a course I use with our teachers and I actually have assignments in here. We have all these trainings that they have to do and we're keeping track of them in here. So these are actually assignments. And I know that um, this Lexia Academy here, it was due on December 7th, but let's say I need to change that because I have a teacher that has been out on leave and she's coming back. So I know she can't complete it by the 7th. So what I can do is I can click at it. <clears throat> and then down at the bottom, I've, uh, you know, I've never really noticed, noticed this until recently. And if you notice, I have it, the everyone, and it's due on December 7th. But you can click right down here at the bottom. If I click add, I can say, all right, um, this teacher right here, they're only going to have this due on December 21st, all right? Now, if you notice what happens, it changed the top part to everyone else. So this particular student, or in my case, it's a teacher, um, will have an extra time to complete that assignment. You can also have adjust these available from and until, they can be different as well. So this, this bottom part here can be different than for the rest of the class. If you wanna add another student in here, you sure can. You can say, all right, these two, I'm going to be able to uh, extend that due date out and the rest of them it's going to be here a lot of the teachers open up the entire assignment for everyone when they don't need to 
So that is, I think, a handy little trick. And we're finding that more and more important as we go through this distance learning. And Marsha, you know, I just want to throw in there, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great tool to utilize for our IEPs, right? So students that have extended time on certain things, um, it's, a great, it's great for that. It really is, it really is, it works great. So another little uh, tip that I think is really useful is um, if you want to change due dates on assignments really quickly, instead of like sometimes it takes a while to get to the course and then you have to drill down to the module and then you have to find the assignment, then you have to open the assignment and then you have to edit the due date and then you have to save it. So that's a lot of steps. But in the calendar, if you notice here, what I've got in the calendar is I have this assignment right here. Now, I don't know if you've used your calendar before, but these are all my courses. So I've got a lot, I got a lot of courses going on here, but I, the ones that have colors are the only ones that are showing on my calendar. So if you have courses where you don't really want to see the calendar, all you have to do is just uncheck it and it won't show up. And they do have different colors. Um, so to say, if I want to change the due date, let's just say, oh, we didn't get to that. Um, you know, the internet was down, Canvas was down, whatever, you know, and you just didn't get to it. All you have to do is drag and drop it to a new date. And it changes the assignment due date, just like that. I mean, it's super, super simple. Also, another thing that you can do is if you click on it from here, you can edit this right here with, again, not having to go find the course, go to the module, find the assignment, open the assignment. They're all right here and it's pretty quick. So if I click edit, I can change the date right here, but I also can go to more options and click there and find anything else that I wanna change there. So that is like super awesome. I love that. Um, all right, so let's go on to the next tip. So that was changing due dates using the calendar. So now let's look at calendar appointment groups. So the cal calendar appointment groups can be used for, for example, um, if you have like a lot of teachers have office hours where they're, they just have it open and then the kids can come in anytime. But if you wanna have where kids can book an office hour or I use it, I can use it as an uh, instructional technology coach where the teachers can actually book me individually. You can use it for booking presentations. For, for example, if you have your class and you're gonna have them, okay, I want a few kids signing up for Monday and a few kids signing up for Tuesday and a few kids signing up for Wednesday. This is how you do it. So let's say I wanna create some appointment groups right within this week. I can just click on the 14th. It, well, uh, there we go. And I'm going to click appointment group. And I can say this, um, we'll call this uh, ITC help. And I'm going to do it on the 14th. And I'm going to do it from nine o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock. And I'm going to add another day. I'm going to do this on the 15th. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do it nine to 10. And I'm actually going to do it on the 16th. So I can do it every day from nine to 10. And right now it's going to divide those into 30 minute increments. But maybe I want to do it 20 minute. And then I'm going to click go. And what it's going to do now, notice it changed the times here. So now I've got a whole bunch of appointment groups. Now I have to decide which calendar. So you need to make sure you put it on the calendar and which your kids are or your students. So for me, I would probably want to put it on my staff calendar. I would put it there so that the staff could book me. But for now, I'm going to do this. And then if you want to, you can limit the time slot to a certain number of users. For, so if you're helping students individually, you could just say, okay, I'm limiting it to one student. Um, and then you can also limit to the number of appointments that they can make. There's a lot of other little things that you can do in here. You can actually put it on multiple courses. So let's say you're a middle school or high school teacher, you can put it on all of your courses and then the kids can sign up for any of the empty slots that are there. You can put the details, you can put the Zoom link, whatever you wanna do, and then you're just gonna click publish. And voila, 
it's going to publish it on your calendar and then the kids what they're going to see to sign up is right above the calendar so they will go to their calendar and they'll find a little thing up at the top that says appointments and then they can make an appointment they'll just click on it i can as an instructor look here i can see who signed up i can look at the details of it i can even send an email to anybody who has signed up I can message students that are, you know, if they've signed up, I can send them a message right here. So that is a pretty cool thing. And that is called um, appointment groups. Are we doing on time? All right. Check that one out. All right. The next thing, this is tip number eight, and it's probably one of my favorite because teachers are always having issues with grading and it's taking so much time. Um, everything is very, 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 very time consuming. So here's just a couple really quick tips on grading. So I'm gonna go in to my grade section. Again, this is my, I'm not giving any way any student data. This is our staff and you'll notice here they have some assignments they actually have to complete and it's just complete or incomplete. If I go to speed grader, which I can do uh, in a variety of ways, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on speed grader right here. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorite things um, right up here. So right now, by default, um, the names are listed in alphabetical order. So if you look here, this person hasn't turned it in, this one's graded, this one's graded, this one's turned it in, but it's not graded, this one hasn't turned it in, right? So it's in ABC order. But if you come up to the gear, remember, you have to be in speed grader. If you come up to the gear and you go to options, you can change this and I really like the one by submission status instead. So what it's going to do is it's going to put all the kids that need grading up at the top. Love it. All right, so I'm going to click that and then I'm going to hit save settings. Now, another thing. So we're going to look at the how this is organized now. Now look, all the ones up at the top need grading the kids in the middle the kids are they haven't turned it in and the ones at the end are the ones that have already been graded now i'm going to combine this with another one of my favorite tips is i'm going to go to keyboard shortcuts so right up here by the gear if i am on this i can use these keyboard shortcuts to go through this fairly quickly right so i mean it's just going to save you clicks so if you're you know you want to do it really 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 quickly this is one way to do it. So I can come here and I can say, okay, complete. And if I click um, J, it takes me to the next student. All right, watch, next student. If I click um, K, it will take me back to the previous student. So I can say complete and I can just click J. Now this, I am a lot faster at this than I am by using these keyboard shortcuts. So there are several other ones in there as well. You can do a C, it takes you down in the comment box. Pretty awesome, pretty quick. Um, a couple, and I'm not gonna completely go into these, but I don't know if there's anybody out there who is as bad as a typer as I am. I am. Okay, Adam, <laughs> okay, that's why we get along so well. Is we have, uh, my typing skills are horrible, but watch this, I can say, I can click on this speed, speak speech to text and I can just talk right here and it's going to just record everything I'm saying period it is pretty awesome I love it period I probably would do this if I wanted to give a lot of feedback period then students wouldn't see so many mistakes that I would make period and I am done and there it is and I can adjust that voila boop 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 and it's right there, very, very quick. And you can also do video comments as well in there. So video comments are super helpful. You, If you have a document camera, let's say you're a math teacher, you can actually hook up, you can do a recording media. If you change your webcam to your, I don't have a document camera at a home, but if you wanted to change your document camera, you could actually even go and work out a problem for the kids and then record that as feedback. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, um, I better move on to, I guess, um, oh, message students who, I got two more tips to do. I better hurry, 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 huh? Two more tips, no comment was saved, all right. 
I love this one, especially for example, this is a perfect example. This assignment for, for the teachers were, was due on the 7th. I can come up here. I can say message students who have not submitted. There they are. Now, oh, Dawn Williams, she's a music teacher. She doesn't need to take this um, course. So I'm, I forgot to take her off of there. So I can take her off. Oh, uh, Katie Salfer, she emailed me her certificate. So I'm gonna take her off of there. So you can adjust this. You can change the subject and you can just send a quick little reminder to them, right in Canvas and then um, teachers get it in there, at least here in Prince William County, they would also get that in their email as well, not just in Canvas. So I love that feature. There's a few other things you can do here. Um, you can message if it hasn't been graded, if they've scored less than a certain amount, or if they scored more than you could say, hey, way to go, you guys are awesome. Give them some kudos. I love that feature too. And I have actually used that actually quite a bit. Um, and then the last tip that we're gonna have time for, we do have some bonus tips in our course, but the last tip is how to you can restore any page. So it has to be a page. Um, and I'm gonna to go to this page gets changed for our, we do announcements on this page for our school and it gets changed daily. And um, sometimes we have different people doing it. Every once in a while it gets really screwed up. Sometimes they accidentally, you know, just like mess the page up. So what you can do on it is just click on these three little dots over here, click on view page history and all the page history is over here. So you can see how many times that it's been changed. I can go back to one of the histories, look at it and say, oh, this is the one that I need to restore and I can click restore this version. Or you can look and see what changes have been made. Or if you need to just copy something from that and, and put it into the final version, you can. So that is called, um, you can, restore your page version or look at versions of your pages by that simple feature. All right, guys, we are about out of time. So we have just a couple quick things. We would love for you to vote on your favorite tip. So we've got 10 tips that we shared here. Um, if I can go ahead, actually, I can, if you want, I will put it in the chat of the link to vote, and then we can see what your favorite tip was. Also, do not forget that we want you to give us feedback on how our session was. So there is a little spot right here. It says the feedback form isn't open yet. Well, let's see, maybe it is now, I don't know. Let me look, where are you, where are you, where are you? Oh, there it is, it's open. What did you think? Please let us know. And I am gonna go back to this page and see the results of the voting to see what your favorite tip. Adam, do you think you, what do you think it's gonna be? You have any idea? I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about it and I'm not sure. There's some- I have a lot there. of them that are my favorite. You know, we also wanna throw out to you guys, I'm gonna put my email in the chat right now. If you have a good tip, um, please shoot, a, shoot me an email, take a video of it or just, or just type it out. Would love to hear about it. Well, Marcia and Adam, I am so thankful that uh, that you all were able to give us these tips and again that we are walking away to talk about it. Talking about continued conversation, one of the places that we can go to do that is inside of that Discord channel, in the Crystal A Discord channel. And uh, Marcia and Adam, even if you want to put some of your resources in there and just say, hey, these are resources from this session, I think that's a great place to carry on the conversation. Again, Thank you all for being here on a Wednesday night uh, during this kickoff day of VISTA 2020. We're so thankful that you are learning with and uh, from each other. And I hope that the rest of this week is awesome for you all. But again, Adam, Marcia, thank you. Mary, thank you very much for being here. And I hope you all have a wonderful night. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.